And welcome to the 18th episode of my advanced English lesson. I've just taught this lesson. I created it for this week. It was based on stories, events that happen, mostly lighthearted and fun. I'm going to start out with talking about last Thursday, which was Leap Day. And the name of this episode is Leap Days and Firefalls, Tales of Survival Records and Reunions. So I asked if my students noticed or thought about February 29th. It always feels weird. It sounds weird. And I shared a, a story. Again, all my pictures are generated by, by AI, but I do have videos that I show my students. I'm not going to show them here. And uh, I'll just read them. I'm going to read these stories, do a couple activities, and then we'll do some exercises based on all of the adjectives from today's lesson. A 100-year-old woman born on Leap Day celebrates her 25th birthday with joy and a big party, cherishing the unique experience of marking her special day every four years. Pretty easy right there. A couple words that could be uh, new. Really just cherishing was the only uh, word that uh, should, could possibly be uh, a new one. Right To cherish something, we usually cherish a noun, but sometimes an abstract noun, more likely to cherish time than, you know, your golden watch. Uh, but you could, absolutely. Uh, I don't know. That's how I look at it. Again, uh, there's certainly nothing wrong with cherishing your golden watch, but I usually use a different word and treasure on, on physical items. That's my choice. I'm sure some people would disagree, but a, as you even say here, cherishing the experience, right? You cherish an experience, cherish the moment, cherish time, definitely a good word to use, add it to your repertoire. And we'll begin with this. These are some easy words, but again, sometimes that rhyming, I'm really working on this with my students, even my advanced students. These are, for the most part, all easy words. Something that we do at night, and I do have a picture of it. It rhymes with the word leap. That's right, it is sleep. Pretty easy, right? And um, what about the next one? This one might be a little more difficult, and it's the opposite of shallow. Some of my students didn't know what shallow was, but for the most part, yeah, when you're walking in maybe the ocean and you're just knee high in water, the water is shallow or on the shallow end of a pool. But when you go in and you're going to fall all the way in, if you can't swim, you'll die because you'll drown. Then it's deep, deep water. And I had that. Uh, there's a Chinese word for deep in case they didn't know. And a white fluffy animal whose fur we use and call it wool is a sheep. And this is a good opportunity. I like to always throw in some extra stuff. I ask my students if they know the name of a baby sheep. For example, what's the name of a baby cat? Many people say kitty. No, kitty is just a cute cat. I think a cute name for a cat. Kitten. Kitten is a baby cat. What about a dog? Again, not doggy. Doggy is just a cute dog, but puppy, right? And we have all of these. There's cub for bears and lions and tigers. Uh, there's owlet for a baby owl. You know, we have chicks for baby chickens, ducklings for baby ducks. And for a sheep, do you know the song? Mary had a little lamb is the correct answer. And something that's very inexpensive is cheap. All of those rhyme with leap, sleep deep, sheep and cheap. Some languages have a hard time distinguishing sheep and cheap. Make sure you can do that for pronunciation. Um, an adventurous cat took a daring leap into a junkyard worker's arms to escape being crushed in a car. He was later microchipped and joyfully reunited with its owner. This is a very heartwarming story because in the junkyard, these are where old cars are stored for some time. People can rummage through them. If you have a missing part or broken part, you can go to a junkyard, get it much cheaper than ordering it from the manufacturer. But at some point, they crush the cars and recycle them, put them in little cubes. And this guy was looking maybe to see if I think there's a battery left over in the hood uh, and opens it up. And there's a cat which would have gotten crushed 
by that. And I just, wow, I was so scared to think about it, but he did it. He was reunited, microchipped, given back to his uh, owner. And now we're going to rhyme with microchip. We don't have to rhyme. It doesn't have to be microchip to rhyme with microchip. We can just rhyme with the final syllable. Um, and that's it. A fun journey or an accidental fall. Again, most of these are easy words. Um, there is that, right? Take a trip. And it's good to actually learn not just trip, but we also have a uh, slip and fall, right? Slip is where you walk in, you more like slip, slip on a banana pill, trip over something, your toe hits something, you trip. In either case, you could fall. You could slip, trip, and fall all at once. The next one is the action of putting a tortilla chip in guacamole. Of course, we've had this. I always reintroduce uh, things that I've talked about before, uh, you know, but it could be a, a dumpling, dipping, dump, uh, put a dump, dumpling in the sauce. I just gave the answer away. Or a French fry and ketchup, a chip in guacamole. That action is dip, right? The first one was, of course, trip. The second one is dip. Dip is also the noun, right? That you could say that that is a chip dip. And it's also an action when you jump into a pool for just a quick swim, just kind of in and out. That's called a dip as well. A large boat, pretty easy, right? But some of my students still, they just couldn't think of it for whatever reason. So this is more just a little brain exercise and obviously not advanced vocabulary words. Ship, part of your mouth. Of course, when you see those, you would say lips, but it is important to know those are actually, our, those are our lips. There's a top lip and a bottom lip and those together make up your lips. All right, those are pretty easy, but fun little break up here. We had a, a, vi a video here, a six minute video of David Rush. We've been following him. He's He got 52 Guinness World Book of Records last year, one for every week. He plans them out, really focused and uh, pretty amazing stuff. Some of them are silly, but uh, some of them are pretty impressive. Some of the things he does that maybe don't seem impressive, but when he shows you the how he does it, you know, it, it's pretty good. So here it is. David Rush on his quest for holding the most concurrent Guinness World Records earned a new title by heading a soccer ball in to a target from over 52 feet away as part of his 2024 project. So it said, I heard he had like 250 records broken, but then people win, beat them back. Somebody who has the record right now is like at 180. He's at like 160. So uh, this is ongoing. Now this isn't perfectly grammatically correct, but uh, this is exactly quote for what he said. If we watch the video and I like to revisit some of the vocabulary we learned, uh, we learned from maybe two weeks ago. My head was in simultaneously intense pain and in intense joy. He was saying it after doing this world record race, headbutting this ball into a, uh, in a bucket, you know, 52 feet away to get the world record. Again, I would put simultaneously, my head was simultaneously in intense pain and in intense joy, but I'm Doing it quote for quote. Again, in colloquial speaking, it's not going to matter. Nobody's going to call you on your grammar when when you use an adverb in, in a different position. Uh, so here we go on this. Of course, this is not what it really looked like. I have a video. It looks pretty amazing, though, in fast motion. In Yosemite National Park, visitors saw the rare firefall effect where the sunset makes the waterfall glow like flames. A tourist captured this fleeting phenomenon on video highlighting its beauty without cloud obstruction for the first time in years. And uh, a fleeting phenomenon, we talk about fleeting, something that doesn't last for very long, phenomenon. Usually we talk about natural phenomenons. A phenomenon is just something that is kind of amazing and it needs an explanation. Um, to call it a natural phenomenon doesn't imply that there isn't an explanation, but it's just at least it, would need an explanation, uh, even if we do have it. Um, so, I mean, technically, the, the scientific de definition of phenomenon, I believe, is uh, something that happens that has no explanation. But colloquially, when we use the word phenomenon, it's usually something that at some time didn't have the uh, understanding of it. You know, we might have it now, but it still qualifies as a phenomenon when, when, when speaking. Natural phenomenons include rainbows, aurora borealis, uh, the mist, even the fog on, on the uh, um, standing on a mountaintop on a, on a cold morning. We have them really beautiful here in Thailand because it gets hot and it gets hot quickly, cold nights, 
a lot of dew, stand up on the mountaintop, just watch it. It's just a sea of fog, quite amazing. And this one here in India, 721 members of the Karbi community set a world record by forming a long line and walking on stilts, celebrating their culture during the Karbi Youth Festival in Assam. This traditional stilt walking symbolizes their unity and heritage. So there's some word we had heritage and culture and history, unity, togetherness, and all of these. We talked about the location of this region. It's in that interesting part of India where it's connected by skinny little land and then larger land. There's the disputed land that touches China. There's Bhutan, even along Myanmar and Bangladesh. It's kind of in, in like a little island or more of a peninsula in different countries. And they're a unique ethnic minority that um, you you wouldn't, I mean, they, they, yeah, they have their own culture, probably more similar to some of the uh, other regions that aren't necessarily part of, you know, in Myanmar and, and Laos and uh, Thailand as well, we have different ethnic minorities in the mountains that have eth uh, Chinese ethnicity, some of them more Indian ethnicity, and then, you know, they're mixed, they've got different religions and cultures, really interesting areas. And we talked a lot about that, watched a couple of videos. And this one is funny. I've heard this before. You're supposed to put a phone in rice if it's wet. I've also heard just take it apart, let it dry. Apple advises against putting wet iPhones in rice, warning it could harm the device. Instead, they suggest wiping and air drying the phones. Samsung also recommends against rice for drying phones. Of course, that's dry rice, not in wet rice. But still, there's going to be dust particles and, and the, the rice could scratch the screen too, probably. And then um, it's going to get stuck in there. Yeah. What, why would you do that? But you could maybe, uh, I've heard it. I have heard that before. I mean, dry, rice is actually good for drying things. Maybe parts, individual parts, I could imagine uh, put in rice, it would dry it out. And this one, we have some uh, still shot pictures, real story. This now, of course, this is AI. It looks like his, his head is, is out of this container, but actually this, I imagine he was uh, wandering around and, and saw some uh, water in it, this plastic container. Maybe it had rained and it drank water, but it stuck its head and it couldn't get it out. It has this plastic container on it for like 12 days. A deer in Indiana with a plastic container on its head for 12 days was saved after rangers removed it, allowing the deer to eat and drink again. So that was a, another heartwarming story about an animal getting saved. I mean, 12 days, I imagine it maybe figured out a way to drink. I doubt it could eat anything. Um, but those uh, rangers sure saved that a deer. And yet another uh, heartwarming story. This picture, of course, again, not exactly what it was. It was more of a, it was a small sinkhole. Firefighters in Los Angeles saved a horse named Lucky who fell into a sinkhole, taking three hours to rescue her. We talked about sinkholes. We showed sinkholes. Sinkholes are basically those caves that are underground and they're far enough underground or, you know, that there's dirt on top and grass. I mean, we don't recognize, we don't know that there's an underground cave and we build roads, we build houses on them and they can collapse and entire houses, entire families have been buried alive in these things. You see them sometimes on the road and in cars. Some of them can be extremely dangerous. There's one in Yunnan province of China where it's actually happened like a long time ago out in the jungle kind of in, in a big sinkhole. And then it's been there so long that trees grow out of that. There's enough light shining in that it's just like the secret uh, kind of enchanting land beneath the the ground you know it's because it, it's uh it's like it just a whole i know there's i think one of the largest ones somewhere in south america people like skydive into it or something it's just crazy uh adrenaline junkies probably and and we have this story the lucky money story here a chinese company in hunan province a company in china created a game for employees to win their year-end bonus by counting as much cash as they could from piles of money at a party of course, year in bonus based on the Chinese New Year, which we have just celebrated. Uh, employees had different time slots to count the money and keep what they counted with penalties for mistakes. The event, part of the company's generous bonus scheme, led to one person winning nearly 98,000 yuan. This approach to bonuses has made the company and its boss famous for generosity, sparking interest from job seekers and commendation online. Now, uh, we talk about 
some different things like the, the exact the penalties. I believe it was one thousand for every uh, one hundred bill. One hundred might might be like fifteen bucks or something. And then um, uh, if you miscount, you lose a thousand. So you're right. I mean, if you if you got ten and you said there was eleven, you'd get nothing. Uh, but uh, sounds sounds like a fun game. I asked my students, some of them, if they would like to work for this company or if they were the CEO, would they? do something like this or if they ever ran a company would this be a, a a way to to do it here we go so adventurous go ahead i'll uh, i'll read it once you read real quick you got to get the answer before i give it i'll just give you only barely uh just a few seconds so the answer is willing to take risks or to try out new methods ideas or experiences concurrent right like simultaneous it is existing happening or done at the same time. Daring is showing a lack of fear, right? right? A lack is to not have it. Fleeting is lasting for a very short time. We have a fleeting memory, a fleeting feeling, a fleeting opportunity, fleeting opportunity. Generous, of course, is showing kindness and willingness to give more than is necessary. And microchip, we've been talking about this, often and it is equipped with an electronic tag it is important to realize that a microchip is not a gps locator it would be nice to have a gps locator on your pets i used to have my cat uh, uh, uh collars with a gps and i was tracking them for a while but you have to keep it charged take it on and off it wasn't that comfortable but it did help actually locate them then one time i lost one of our cats and i located it but he had taken off he had gotten out of it we lost him for like 18 days, 19 days, I think it was, finally, and he came back. He must have jumped in someone's car, and they drove off or something. I don't know. When he came back, he was worn out, and he's still here. He's still one of the three cats that we still have alive. Love that little guy, Hummus. Um, and uh, rare is not common and unusual or unusual. The next one is the interview style. I'm going to raise my picture up here. Interview style questions. And I'll ask these real quick, but this, of course, would be an opportunity for you to uh, give me an answer. So try to do it. Describe a time when you were adventurous. What did you do? Again, we're going to have a, a questions to use these adjectives in a, in, in a fill in the blank. So this is a time to speaking practice as well as uh, cement those new uh, adjectives and in some case converted to an uh, adverb in in the context, but still you're going to understand the meaning of the word. Can you think of an example where you had to do two important tasks concurrently? I don't know. Eating and playing. A lot of my students said that. Eh, fair enough. Yeah. Eating and playing are both very important tasks, actually. I think those are essential to uh, uh, leading a good life. Share a daring dream or goal you have. Why is it daring to you? Depending on, on the goal or dream, I think that would be obvious in some cases that it's an extreme activity and if not you know it can be daring because you know you're you're shy or timid about speaking in front of people and you could just say to give a lecture in front of a room full of people could be daring i'd be like why but if as long as you can explain it that's the purpose this is expressing yourself you know you make a position just back it up basically so talk about a fleeting memory that is precious to you what makes it special? Again, remember fleeting is short memory, you know, these quick memories you have, or it could be a memory of a fleeting incident, however you want to uh, look at it. Uh, who is the most generous person you know? What have they done? Get an opportunity. Answer the question, my grandpa. Okay, tell me why. All right. Do you think microchipping pets is a good idea? Why or why not? Definitely matters, I guess, in the area, how likely is your animal going to get lost? If it were to get lost, are people going to take it in? Again, it's not a GPS locator, so it's really a matter of somebody taking it into a vet and they'd scan it. That information would have the uh, phone number and your address and things like that. Uh, what's something rare that you've experienced or would like to experience? It could be something like a natural phenomenon. It could just be crazy luck. We talked about luck in different incidences. And... Um, now I think we've got those words, so go ahead, this is it. Match those words, take a look at them, and then I'm gonna go.
right? We're going to look at all of them. So that first question, I'll, I'll read a blank once and then I'm going to give you the answer. The blank offer from the stranger to pay for the groceries was greatly appreciated. The answer is generous. The blank explorer set out to find undiscovered lands across the sea. The answer is adventurous. The two events were blank, causing a scheduling conflict for attendees. The answer is concurrent. Our meeting was a blank chance to discuss the project as everyone was busy. It was a fleeting chance. That's right. And the blank decision to invest in an unknown startup could lead to unexpected success. And that is the daring decision. Again, it doesn't have to be dangerous physically, but investments can be daring too, by all means. After the puppy was found, it was blank for safety before being adopted. And that answer, of course, is microchipped. And the final one is a what a blank bird species was spotted in the local part. Exciting bird watchers. We've got a lot of birds on my land. I love them. Um, I'm someday going to learn their names. The answer for that, of course, is rare. A rare bird species was spotted in the local park. Exciting bird watchers. And that uh, finishes it for today. A little shorter, actually, than before. I always change up my things really for my sake, for your sake, for my students' sake. Uh, I change it up. I change up the games, the activities. I don't like doing the exact same format each time. I usually do the same format a couple weeks in a row and, and changing some, changing some in and out. I've got some ideas for next time. And until then, enjoy your week. Happy March, everybody. Bye-bye.